Hey Internets, I'm sitting here with good friend Patrick Eckstein. He's part of a group that I really think is going to change the game for eyewear. He's co-founder of a brand called William Painter. First of all, let's talk about William Painter. Talk about the brand. Talk about uh, the glasses. Well, William Painter is the uh, world's first ever uh, titanium sunglasses that have the ability to open bottles. We have them, basically, we patented the material, design the function of how those work. Started off as kind of a niche product kind mm -hmm. of the deal. You know, we had this hook, literally and figuratively, that works for our product that really like kind of put us in the market and mm -hmm. gave us like a, a little bit of a leverage or a foothold, a reason for retailers or, or, you know, whether it's online or brick and mortar to carry us. And then now as it's grown, it's kind of developed into, as we're seeing more of like a brand where we're looking to have it really kind of expand into multiple categories. That obviously will be over much time, you know, mm -hmm. but there's kind of an evolutionary process where I think, you know, we start right now with William Painter, uh, our sunglasses, it looks like it has more legs than just kind of that novelty hitch, you know, and we really are kind of now concentrating on really high product quality, high end customer service, yeah. um, and then kind of pushing more as a high end lifestyle brand. This is weird because I, I never really do commercial per se for product or even in the, the interview series, but I already know everyone's going to say, where can I get those? Just so that people know, obviously, williampainter.com. Sure. Yeah. Williampainter.com. We also have the retail map on our site, but we have Southern California. We have a couple in Irvine couple in San Diego, San Francisco, Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo, and we have some on the East Coast as well. Oh, and we're, in, we're new in Las Vegas, can't forget Crooked. Shout out DJ Crooked. Yeah, DJ Crooked. This venture in fashion, everything has moved really quickly for you. And uh, sometimes I'll interview people that have eight years, six years of experience, <laughs> yeah. but this is a newer venture for you. The last time that we just wrapped out, yeah. the amount of knowledge that you've gained in the short amount of time that the venture's been going on and growing to what it is now, you've just learned a crazy amount. Yeah, totally. It's the equivalent of years. So I, I want you to talk about that journey of from the idea to where you're at here. It is like, like you said, it's like a really quick evolution, you know, as far as how it grew. And I think that's because we kind of had something that was a little more shareable than other products, perhaps. Yeah. Because it is something that hasn't really been done in a market before. So that kind of allows it to really go. The process has just been pretty crazy. We did a Kickstarter, was the, kind of the start of the, of the business. Once we got Kickstarter going, got funded, got our money from that, we're able to, you know, kind of cover our first order. We just kind of bootstrapped everything ourselves. It's not a big team, but everyone's really effective in their jobs. And everyone has a pretty set, defined role. Kind of in the very beginning, we were able to kind of really make sure that everyone was clear on what who's covering what and why they're there for that reason. And that seems to kind of the clarity in the beginning allowed us to kind of stay out of a lot of crap in the process and then we had a really good group of mentors and advisors that we've been talking to for you know a year or so their advice is so huge for us and that's been able to allow us to almost move a little quicker I think is because we're smaller and more agile and then it also getting their advice and learning their pitfalls learning where they've gone wrong we're learning you know their biggest mistakes and things like that's allowed us to kind of build our own we're still making them but we're able to kind of mitigate yeah. some of those risks it reduce you know the, yeah reduce the yeah, risk exactly yeah. that's really been I think a huge part of the growing process and then learning it's just been like a crash course, you know, sure. it's just been kind of been in sales and some marketing prior to this, you know, right. but I mean, nothing near the scale or setup that fashion or lifestyle or product based categories are. Right. Um, so we're learning a bunch about that. But I mean, it's just we're just kind of absorbing as right. much as we can. And the, the biggest attitude I think that we take with it is we know nothing. You know, it's like yeah. and that almost helps us more than I think some other people because like we see when we talk to other people, we go to conferences or we go to accelerators or incubators. Yeah. Thing that they, so it's, a lot of people are kind of very assuming of their like knowledge in the product yeah. or, or knowledge in the in that channel. Yeah. And it seems to me like that's a really kind of poisonous attitude because you, you really can't stop yourself from absorbing a lot of the stuff. And right. I think our immaturity, I guess you yeah. would say, has allowed us to kind of just be like, we, we, know any, we know nothing, you know? So right. what can we learn from John Fina and what can we learn from, you know, different people in the market? So I think that's that's been a really big part of the learning process. 